time. But one of the things that we'll hear today about the five problems and the eight antidotes, it's this idea of uh, habituation, of your, your body gets used to being in that thing, and as it does, for those of you who learn neuro-linguistic programming or heard Anthony Robbins or any of those kind of people, they will tell you that your body, in a certain position, invokes a certain reaction of your mind, of your thinking. So it makes sense that you should sit, yeah, that your body, once you get used to it, you get accustomed to it, that your mind will naturally gravitate towards that state of mind that you've been habituating. Now, if you sit in the perfect posture, and you're sitting there thinking guilty, 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 that's what's going to be invoked. There's nothing self-existent about this posture. Yeah? It <laughs> whatever you're doing is what's going to be triggered. Hence, the importance of bringing your mind to the right state. It's very quiet today. Am I just talking by myself? <laughs> okay, here we go. We did that. Frustrations, we did that. Then we said that the place, the conditions had to be good, and that's great if you're going to go and do a, a long-term retreat. We talked about the posture, which we covered before. Please say Nengpa. Nengpa. Na. Yeah. Nimpa, no. Nimpa, no. And <laughs> Nimpa reminds me of going to Nepal recently with these two lovely ladies. Who else was there? Uh, Shima, yeah? And Shima is this crazy woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing. But she'd go. <laughs> Nimpa, the Tibetan, would say to her, which was, it's a problem. <laughs> Because <laughs> she would uh, she would try and barter them down below <laughs> below a point that was acceptable for any human being, <laughs> and they're like, "No, nah, it's a problem." <laughs> so that's a nyempa, a nice five, say five. 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 So five. The five problems. These these are problems, universal problems that arise when you try and meditate, you try and, and focus. So we're going to learn about some of them today. And then say, Nyempo Gye. Nyempo Gye. Good. Nyempo is antidote. And Nye is Nye. Is <laughs> as the sound that Monty Python knights <laughs> make. No, that's the nice to say Nye. Yeah. <laughs> so there are the eight corrections to the five problems, right? So this is why I brought you bits of paper, pass them around in traditional Tibetan pager format. But one each. Yeah. Um, bum, 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 bum. So yeah, there's three things here that that uh, th this comes from. Uh, what's Pabonka Rinpoche's Lamrim called? Liberation, Liberation upon your, your hand, hand, which Geshe Michael Roach is teaching over the next nine years or whatever it is left in Arizona. So if you want to get the detail of these, uh, we're just going to really touch them today, just as a summary. If you want to get the details, go to those teachings online. They're online. Right? Yeah. yeah. Amazing depth of detail. You're not going to get that kind of detail in clear English with clear English metaphors mm -hmm. from somebody who's had the experiences that are described in there, you will not get it in this lifetime. Yeah. So if you want to get to understand the five problems and the eight antidotes, the nine stages, and the six powers, whatever, please, if you're going to make it a focus to figure out what your mind is, please go and study that either online or the book, I think, there's two volumes, yeah, Liberation of the Hands. Incredible detail. But this comes from that, three volumes. Thank you. So then there's three things that that covers, and the first one is the five problems, the, uh, the eight antidotes, and the nine mental stages that come as a result of applying the antidotes to the problem. Yeah. Welcome to Tibetan Buddhism. Five problems. Say Lelo. 
Hello. Hello. You. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Lelo means uh, laziness. Yeah. So Lelo means laziness. It's the first of the problems. Um, and it's funny because I got so confused. You know, you thought the six preliminaries and the seven, whatever. No, the six. Pre uh, Preliminary. And the seven, seven ingredients. ingredients. Oh, thank you. People are listening. Yeah. Uh, well, difficult. Thank you. Um, I got so confused here. I'm like, I don't understand. Lelo is one of the problems. It means laziness. It basically means you just don't want to do it. <laughs> it's like it's such a good first problem. Because <laughs> it's really like you're sitting in bed and you're like, I don't want to do it. <laughs> do do it. Why do you want to do it? What a stupid thing to do, sit down. Why would, any, why would anyone want to do that? You know? So that's the first problem. It's like they call it laziness, but it's just not wanting to do it. Just having that mental state that says not interested. Not interested to make efforts towards meditating. Very real <coughs> and everyone should have it. Mm. just because you don't feel like it so remember I said there's eight corrections we used the first four of those corrections on this problem <laughs> which is good <laughs> because I did this is the part I didn't understand so the first antidote or correction um, is tingenzin is that up there yeah tingenzin tingenzin la depa Say Ting and Sin. La Depa. Do you remember Ting and Sin? From when we learned all the words of in Sanskrit and Tibetan, the six and six of t of meditation, first class. What was Ting and Sin? Cool. Yeah, it was one of the general words about concentration was single pointed. Do you remember who has Ting and Sin? Who has the capacity for Ting and Sin? We do. Huh? Why? Why does everybody have the capacity for single pointed concentration? Well, because we have all been concentrated in something Great. at some point. Great. So even a dog going, I want that steak. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah that's Excellent. concentrated. <laughs> Thank you. Just checking. So <laughs> Ting and Zing is one pointed focus. Um, La is towards and Depa is faith. That pissed me off. Mm -hmm. So let's figure this out. Um, so one of the most general words, blah, 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 keep single pointed, that's Ting and Zin. Uh, faith here is not faith like we think of it in faith. The translation is to be attracted to something because you see the benefits of it. In that way, it's faith. It's the closest word, faith. So you're tr attracted, you gravitate towards something because you see the goodness in it. You see. Um, yeah, the good you see the good quality. So, what what should you be having this faith towards, according to this first antidote to first part of the antidote to the first problem? The single point of concentration. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So you should be able to see some good qualities in single pointed concentration as the first antidote to the lazy ass, I don't want to meditate. Yeah, that's how it goes down. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, which, you know, poses a question, why are you here? What's the point of studying these things? Because if you can get a real answer <laughs> that does something in here, not because it's nice and it's going to be la-di-da and you're going to still have a suffering life just with a smile on your face <laughs> but inside you're churning up your body's breaking apart you're losing the job you're losing the partner you know it's not about coping with shit it's about removing that experience from your life permanently what's the definition of nirvana permanent cessation of all mental mental <laughs> afflictions. So, what's nirvana with bodhicitta? 
Buddhahood. Buddhahood. Enlightenment. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, excellent. So, one of the reasons they cite for having faith in single point of concentration, because if you, if you have faith, you know, if you have this, I see the good qualities, is to consider the good qualities. And one of the good qualities, they list three. Yeah? One of the, do they list three? Yeah. Is that the only way to move along the five paths is if you have single point of concentration. That most of the progress of the five paths, if not all the progress of the five paths, occur because you've got that capacity built up through meditation, through the practice of concentration. So what are the five paths in simple words? The path of? Accumulation. Accumulation, which means what? Accumulation. Why? Because you're sick of stuff breaking down here. You've got some kind of renunciation. You said, right, I'm done with this. Things not working. I'm done with it. There's no way to get a deep sense of... It's just more of the same. If I get, if I continue to get the better job, if I get the better partner, if I get, uh, it's just more of the same. If you believe that the mind continues beyond death, at the best, you're just going to have to do all this again. Find a partner, find a job, look after the body, feed it, poop it, fix it when it breaks, say goodbye to it. That's the best scenario. Some of us will get to a nursing home, some of us will not. Honestly, this is not like some blah blah, this is real. Some They'll find your body. Most of us, they will, because we live in a world where they find bodies and they put them in the ground. Some we won't. This is the best. So you get that shit. This is it. Maybe there's a different thing here. So you get that kind of renunciation. There's a whole method in doing that. We talked about that already in the three principal parts. But you get real about it. That's one of the interesting things about uh, this path. They describe that part really well. You know, even if I don't believe all the other stuff that the Buddha taught, or that the Buddhists explain that the Buddha taught, because some of it requires you to make uh, correlations, and you have to think, oh, if that's true, then that's true, and that's true, and you're getting two or three times around. So even now, sometimes I think, oh, I don't know if I believe that. But you know, the first, the description of the first of the four aerial truths was very clear. And it made sense, and it's very real. At the very best, we got more of this. Well, how many of these do you want? So anyway, five parts. <laughs> the first one is you accumulate some merit to get some ejection power for the next three, which are the path of preparation, preparation the path of seeing, seeing, and the path of habituation. habituation. You're preparing to see emptiness directly, you're seeing emptiness directly, and then you habituate your mind for what it saw. So you have some kind, you're accumulating some merit, you've got this disgust for the way things are, and you use that as power to accumulate some merit, meaning I've got to figure this out. Oops, I'm not by myself, there's other people around here. In this system, you think of them, and then you think, I better prepare myself. If this isn't working this way, I want to figure out what is making it work. What's the code behind the matrix? I really want to figure it out. And I don't care whether you call it seeing emptiness directly, the code behind the matrix, make, make, visiting God, reading, or, I don't care. It doesn't matter. But if you have that state of mind that says, I better investigate. I need to figure out the way things really work. Because the way I think work doesn't seem to work then that's the path of preparation. You're preparing to have that experience, that communion with that ultimate nature of things, the way things really work. Then you actually have the experience and depends which of the Tibetan people you ask, which sect or which this or which text. Some of them say it takes 15 seconds. Some, some say, seriously, that that path of seeing is 15 seconds. Some say it's 15 minutes. It, to me, it doesn't matter. Is that the fact that you can do that? I'll figure out the closer I get to it. I'm sure I'll, I'll figure it out. Mm. Yeah. And then 
The theory is that after you've had that experience, you come back to this reality and you can't see the world the same. But the inertia of having seen the world that way for so long is still so driving your every existence that you need to habituate your mind to what you just saw. Trying to think. Yeah. yeah. If, if something, um, if you saw something that you didn't quite understand as a child, and then later on in life, you um, you understood what what you saw, because you've got the context of being an adult. It's like that. And then the last one is success. You've reached Buddhahood. Or Nirvana if you're a selfish bastard. <laughs> That's a joke. Nirvana's a good thing. <laughs> it, it, the thing is that the interesting thing about the, the Mahayana path, the, you know, with just <laughs> the interesting thing about adding bodhicitta to the impulse to get out of suffering. Like at the beginning, it's just a millisecond of thought, you know, it's just to say, oh my God, I'm caged up in this steel cage of suffering thrown into the river of, you know, the four currents in pitch dark ignorance, you know, un uh, difficult to undo the past karmas, etc. You think, I'm, I'm screwed. I want to figure it out. I want to break the chains. I want to get some light. I want to get out of the rivers. It's not hard to look and see all the other boxes floating in the river. <laughs> you know, and unlike crabs, when you put them all in a bucket, that they are climbing on top of each other to get out, and so nobody gets out. Unlike that, you, you want to say, wow, I, we're all screwed, so let's fix it for each other. That's not a hard divergence of thought for that first realization where you think, I'm screwed. The way I've been operating in this life is just not, it's not going to get me any permanent result. Everything I'm working for seems to be giving me temporary results. What a waste of most of my time. So, you look over there and you think, I used to think that way. I want to help you. Yeah, and then it's funny, when you, when you do that, then th that person you've been calling keeps coming. So that's one thing they say. One of the, so we're on to the first part of the first <laughs> and to the, to the first problem. So why am I talking about all this in terms of uh, trying to get an antidote to laziness? Because the first thing you've got to realize is there's a good thing here. <laughs> there's a really good thing here if you figure it out. The only way to progress through the five parts is in this state. Build that state. If you just want, if you want to get a better job, then you'll get the benefits of the um, some of the side effects, which you know, good concentration, etc. The other thing is you attain good qualities. Um, you'll attain some of the good Buddhist qualities. Um, it's funny because this is like a double loop. They say that the only way you're going to maintain a clear focus concentration in meditation is if you have good morality not because morality is a good thing from its own side but once you understand the way it's presented with emptiness you'll understand why morality is so important but it says here you'll also attain the capacity for that um, and just on the nominal sense if you, if you build the capacity for your mind to be clear and sharp and focused because you've sat down and you've done this for a month, yeah? In terms of morality, you might be in front of somebody at work who is yelling at you or angry at you or something and you want to punch them or scream at them and you're probably going to do something to screw your own mind up. Having the capacity to focus will prevent you from doing that. And in that case, it's, it's a beautiful morality. And then, of course, you can 
you can do it because you eventually going to be able to read people's minds, see the future, do miracles, and etc. etc. Yeah. But <laughs> and you know, there's something special in that. So there are three things, three benefits of doing that: the five paths, um, the good Buddhist qualities, and some of the side effects. I call. They're not the reason to meditate, but there's something. Um, there's something in, in having those powers that they say you can get. Hmm. In summary, you just don't want to do it because you don't understand how it can help you. So understand how it can help you. Yeah. Um, and in fact, you know, the, uh, for those of you who know Lama John Brady, I think he's up there. Yeah. Hmm? Amazing, amazing person. <coughs> He said to me a couple of times, he said, Hector, when when you don't want to meditate the most, so for those of you who have a meditation practice, who have a daily practice, there are those days that this problem attacks you strongly. Uh, I've been doing this for 15 years, bored already. You know, there's a thousand excuses why you don't want to do it. And he says, Hector, it's those days when I've, um, I was so low that I just didn't even want to move. And it's those days that I crawled my ass to the meditation cushion that I had the most progress. There is something in that. There's something about being in your most frail and vulnerable and counter-virtue state of mind and then having something in you that says, screw it, I want to fix it. And then even if you just sit there, there's something in that effort that will ripen later as a result. And I think that's one of the most beautiful bits of advice I've got about the antidote to laziness. So, the next antidote is you want it. I think this is funny. So first of all, this is me dating, by the way. The first thing you do is you think of all the good qualities of, of that other person. <laughs> the next thing that arises, no pun intended, is you want it. You want that other person. Yeah? So once you've figured out, oh, these are all the benefits of getting single-pointed concentration, then there's something that drives you to want it, right? So that's uh, Dumpa, say Dumpa. 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 That means you want Shamatha. You want an understanding of how things work. And you know that single focus can get you that. So the next part, so these are steps really, because the, the real antidote is the fourth one. This lead up to the real antidote. But without these, you can't get the antidote. So the next one, say Tsundru. And that means effort. So this is where you're trying hard to meditate. As a result of wanting shamatha, as a result of wanting uh, single pointed concentration. Hmm. And then, so you see the person that you like, you think of all the good qualities, you bring to mind all the good qualities, you want them, and then you make efforts towards them. Right? You send them a text. <laughs> <laughs> you stalk their locker. Yeah, you stalk what? You, you stalk their locker. You stalk their locker, that's it, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and they, maybe they didn't pay attention to you. So, what do you do? You think of their qualities again. You really want them, so you try a different technique. Maybe the locker doesn't work, so maybe the texting doesn't work. So, you know. <laughs> You leave flowers on their desk or something, you know. I remember stalking this little girl. I was in Argentina. I was short and round. And I was, <laughs> I was all of six or seven or something, maybe smaller. Um, and there was the only like everyone's dark, yeah. So they, they everyone's dark skinned and dark hair and blue, you know, brown eyes. And there's this glorious blonde, glowing angel in the room with blue eyes. And everyone's like, what? She was new to the 
area, you know, <laughs> to the school. <laughs> I can't remember her name, but I was I was not paying attention to anything else but her. I saw all her good qualities, <laughs> and I wanted her. <laughs> but you know, as a kid, I, you know, what do you do with that? You know, so. I mastered up all these uh, excuses to go and stand next to her and she wouldn't pay attention and all these days went past and one day that she's sitting like this a road to the teacher and I'm at the back and she's sitting over there and I master something I write something stupid for the teacher and I go to give it to the teacher so I'm walking up I'm making efforts right I made all these <laughs> efforts <laughs> but eventually I got good at it I got good at it, so when I walked past, I just leaned over and I gave her a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> I know, right? And I went to the teacher and I gave her this stupid piece of paper that had nothing. And then I came back, really bad. everybody saw me, like, I'm, I'm an idiot. You know, like I was a kid. You know? so, but I got good at it. I got so good at it that I made efforts and I've made some progress. And that's the next one. <laughs> Say <laughs> Shingyan. <laughs> that means practice ease. It means with practice you get better at it, right? By the way, the next afternoon her parents were waiting for me outside, Aww. and I didn't know what they were going to ask. But all I did was cry and run. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure they wanted to see if I wanted to go for dinner. But that was it. <laughs> so <laughs> so Shingyan means doing it over and over. You naturally become good at it. Yeah. So doing something that's just any kind of learning doing over and over, you get good at it. First of all, you get a good, so at the posture, first of all, you get good at your body. So doing it over and over, your body will get used to sitting here. And then secondly, your mind will get used to what you're forcing it to do that it wasn't used to before. But covers again, it becomes just something else you do and it doesn't have any effect. You know what I mean? Once you do something so many times, it just becomes Yeah, good, good question. But you're a little ahead, like usual. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> 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 we're good. It's a, it's a real problem. Yeah, and we should fix it. No, we're, um, we're, yeah, it, true, true, absolutely. There's, that's one of the problems coming up we have to fix. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Good. You're Tibetan. Uh, <laughs> so body will blah blah blah. So you get Xingyang. Yeah, that's really the antidote. The, the real antidote is to get used to something, habituated to such a point that you're naturally you have practiced ease about sitting down, meditating and getting single pointers. So you avoid laziness by getting good at something. And when you look at work, for example, you know, I'm really good at this, I'm doing a confession, I've got all these thousand things to do at work. A bunch of them I don't like, some of them I like, yeah? I've built the habit of thinking why I like them, I like them, I do them, I get good at them, practice ease. So guess out of all the things that I have to do at work, which ones I tend to do most? The ones I like. Not the ones I don't like. <laughs> so it's the same here. Just before we leave uh, Lalo, one thing that was uh, taught to me a few years ago that helped me and I wanted to say is, um, you know, Lalo traditionally means laziness, but being too busy is also a form of laziness. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, I'm just too busy, that's laziness. Cool, cool. Yeah, any, anything that your mind will throw at you to say not, why not to do it will be seen under laziness. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah, um, I do my prayers and offerings before I sit and meditate. And sometimes I get home so late, I'm kind of tired, and I just do like five or ten minutes. Cause I just, I try to continue to meditate in my sleep. Um, you know, like yeah. I continue the thought or something laying down, but you know, that's a good my practice. My body gets a little fatigued sometimes if I get home <coughs> like eleven or twelve, and I did all my, cause I have a lot of things I have to do that way before I sleep, so, um, you know, uh, is that, is that, like, really bad? It's funny. To, to continue it when I no, 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 continuing after you go to sleep is a good thing, you know, so that kind of, allowing your mind to go in there, that... Uh, um, well, one day a week I get to bed a little earlier, so I, I, ha I can say that I can have a really good meditation, like, twice a week, honestly, that sounds terrible. But it's like twice a week for a half hour, I can have like a really uh, a good one. <laughs> Doesn't sound terrible. It sounds really good that you're meditating every day. <laughs>
I mean, you know, it sounds really good that you're making mental efforts to meditate every day. Uh, getting tired is also, it's funny because it's not one of the problems identified, but when Geshe Michael talks about it, he goes, you know, I've identified another problem for me anyway, which is being tired, you know, and being tired. So if you don't look after your body, if you don't allow your body to be vibrant and healthy and ready, and it gets tired, then you're not going to have the sharpness, you're not going to have the drive, the yeah. capacity. So you have to balance that. And it's all about prioritization. So when it gets about talking about busy, getting busy, it's like, what is the activity that prevents you from doing this? And I bet you whatever it is, it's likely to be impermanent. Whatever it is, it's likely to end in one year, two years, three months, three years. Whatever you're making efforts towards, being busy or whatever, it's going away. Your mind isn't. Uh huh. You want to do it. So that's it. You got the story of the girlfriend. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> let's have a 10 minute break and we'll do P2. Yeah? So we did P1, 2, 3, Ace, and did 1, 2, 3, and 4. Sorry. We'll do P2, 3, and then we're done for today and we'll do the next part. Not next week, but the week after. There's some announcements to come. Thank you very much. See you in 10 minutes at 8.902.